to y'all. Uh, I, 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 I want to tell you something. Uh, the criminal justice system is like, uh, 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 when you get entangled in it, it's hard to get out of it. I'll give you a case in point. You know, you get charged with a misdemeanor, right? You get charged with a misdemeanor, and then what happens is you go to court and you get found not guilty, but then six years later you apply for a job and the job says to you, you were charged six years ago, but wait a minute, I wasn't convicted. You see, the criminal justice system is doing exactly what it was meant to do to black people. And so when I said I love you, I said I wasn't going to get on this microphone and say I love you and then tell you a lie. There's more systems, every system that we have, the education system, the criminal justice system, the system of policing, the Minneapolis Police Federation. Listen! By the way, listen! I said I loved you, so I won't get on the microphone and lie to y'all. If you're not careful, the media will help support these systems. The media will have you believing that I'm a criminal. Yeah. Here we are standing on ground zero. We know who burned this place down. Listen! And if you're not careful, the media will have you believing that black people came here from rural Minnesota, like we got farms, <laughs> <laughs> Just so we and could. burned this place down. Look. We didn't do this. Yo, they want to promote this propaganda that we need law and order. Well, we got law and order because we saw it right there across the street. The training officer showed us the type of training that's coming out of this police department. If you're not careful, the media will have you believing that I'm racist for talking about them. The media will have you believing that I'm the evil guy for talking about racist people. The media. Y'all mean to tell me y'all didn't hear the dog on uh, Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office say that George Floyd died over what? Come on now. He had an overdose of a knee on his neck, an overdose of an officer holding his legs down. He had an overdose of police brutality. We're not blind. That part. Are we blind when we saw the man walk up to Philando's car and pump six bullets in his doggone chest with a four-year-old baby in the back seat? Listen. Were we blind? What? Oh, 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 were we blind when we watched the criminal justice system say, it's okay, Officer Yanez, you get to go home? Were we blind? See, I wasn't here to tell y'all something like I, I, I'm lying, right? Here's the other piece because I love you. It's only three pieces I'm gonna give y'all, then I'm gonna move because I love y'all. I gotta tell y'all the important pieces. We can come out here. This microphone is a very powerful tool. Use it. Use your voices. Do not be afraid to call out racism. Do not be soft-spoken about racism. Do not be afraid of white supremacists threatening you because you're calling out racism. I'm standing here with the colors. Black for the color of my skin. Red for the blood that my ancestors bled on the ground and green for the grass that we helped grow here in this doggone place. We helped build this raggedy place. And it sucks to be black here. Yeah, listen. Third piece. This is my last piece. Because I love y'all, I said I'm gonna be brief and then I'm gonna move. I love y'all and I hope y'all are listening. Cause this is the most important shit you're gonna hear today. Take your ass to the poll and vote. We don't need a room full of white people making decisions for black people and black communities. We don't need a room full of people that have been in these seats for 22 years uncontested. Check your ballots and see how many people are contesting some of these judges. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Listen. Like we don't know no qualified lawyer. We don't know no qualified judge, judges. We ain't got qualified public defenders that we can put in office. That's right. Yeah, that's, hey, this is important. We have to what? Both. Organize, yeah. strategize, and mobilize our people. Yeah. Right. Through talking about it, y'all. I'm through marching. I got on black boots on purpose. I'm ready to stomp the hell out of racism. Listen. After you put your name on the ballot, build you up a doggone politician. Build a politician that you want to see in your community and support them. Yeah, that part. It's a damn shame these people been, they are comfortable giving you nothing out of legislation because y'all ain't giving them no doggone challenge at the polls. 22 years uncontested. Uncontested judges seats. 
uncontested process. The Hennepin County Medical, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office is in complicit in the racist stuff that goes on here, right here. And I'm here to tell y'all, I'm comfortable making them uncomfortable. Listen, put your name on the ballot. That's the last piece. If you're uncomfortable with what you see in your community, put your name on the ballot. Stop letting these people run your community. Stop letting these people run your community and stop complaining about it. Do something about it. Take your butt to the poll. Tap somebody on the shoulder say, come to the poll with me November 3rd. Do that. Tap somebody on the shoulder. Tell them to come to the poll with me. I should see all y'all talking. Tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them to vote. Listen. Listen to me. Black, I'll say it three times. Black votes matter. matter. Black votes matter. Black votes matter. We don't have the right people in office. My y'all Burrell wouldn't be in jail right now. We don't gonna talk about these people. We ain't gotta name them. We don't gotta talk about them because they know what they're doing to us. We just want y'all to stop. And since we all tired of it, let me tell you something. I'm not an activist, I'm activated. Right. I'm already activated. Listen. I'm not a protester. I'm a protector of my community. Yeah. I'm a protector of my people. I said I was going to leave this bike smoking when I got through with it. Listen. This is the last piece, man. I promise y'all I keep saying that, man. But I love y'all, man. I don't even want to let the microphone go. Y'all don't see this fool in office say, proud boy, stand down and stand by. Listen! You know, anytime a six foot three black man says something or says he's tired of something, they label him an animal. He's uh, uh, rational. He's, he's mad. Oh my God, this black man. Yeah, let a black man get on stage and he got the seat that this man say. Let a black man, let Obama say, GD, stand down and stand by. Let uh -huh. Obama say, Vice Lords, stand down and stand by. Let Obama have to say, Black Stone, stand down. Let Obama have to call them names out. That ain't no dog whistle. Listen. These people got a reason to hate us. They hate us because they see that they on the last leg. Oh, yeah, racism, we chasing your ass about our state. It's the last, last thing I'm going to say. Free. Motherfucking Mayan Burrell. Yeah! Free Mayan! Free Mayan! Free Mayan! I can't hear y'all! Free Mayan! I said free Mayan! I said free Mayan! Hey, hey! I can't hear y'all! Free Mayan! Free Mayan! Free Mayan! Free Mayan! All power to the people. I love y'all, man. From nice. Land of the free, I just want to make money, but this land full of greed, they just want to take from me. America, not a country, it's a corporation. Built upon corpses and enforcing all this enslavement. Horrible races control the nation, I'm losing patience. My people facing systematic oppression and economic devastation and mass incarceration. And multi-generations of trauma passed from mamas and mamas and grandmamas. To our fathers who was taken from out of our homes Stripped of identity, got us looking like skeleton bones Gotta learn how to own, we can no longer afford to rent Feel as us versus the world, so in these verses I'm a vent The police destroying tents, they terrorizing the homeless It's a thin line between law and morale in that moment These people bogus, I ain't feeling like a civilian Screaming hashtag save the children Listen. All power to the people I wanna say peace and love First and foremost, I gotta give my respect to the family of Maya Burrell. Yes. Yes. My love and compassion is with you all. Father, niece, son, another young black man just like me. We are a reflection of each other. I wanna say peace and love to all of our brothers and sisters out here who are standing in solidarity with peer intentions. And I also wanna say peace to the enemies, if they are out here. Yeah. You know, I just, I just want to say that I think we would be fooling ourselves to not think that out of all of this work that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, out of all of this noise that we are making, that these enemies are not out here watching. Listen. I think, I think that we have to start.
dotting our I's and crossing our T's and moving a bit more cautiously. Like my brother just said, we have to organize, we have to strategize, and then we have to mobilize. You see, this is chess, not checkers. Yes. We've been playing checkers for too long. And like somebody said earlier, if you keep on trying to do the same thing and you ain't getting no results, let's, let's try something new. Let's try something new. And personally, I believe that we are in another moment, as our great brother Malcolm said, the ballot versus the bullet. Basically, we can vote or re-vote. We can organize, strategize, and mobilize our communities to go in, step into these positions of power, and demand justice, take control, and empower ourselves to make the change and lead that revolution. Or we might have to declare liberty of death. But as a black man, we walk in these streets every single day feeling like we're already dead inside. So what does liberty of death matter to us? It don't matter. I'm talking about over 400 years, over 400 years of this systematic oppression and systematic racism. They constantly leave you silence and silent. And they tell you that you are not worthy. They tell you you are not valuable. They tell you you are not important. Well, I'm here to tell you that that shit is a lie. All right. I am powerful. Yes. I am valuable. Yes. And I am important. Yes. You see, I just want to say we all have a role in this revolution. And that role is rooted in your personal calling. Your personal purpose. That's something that you was gifted with since birth. Your life, whatever that is, find that, hold it, keep it dear to you, and let that light shine. That part. Because until we all free, we gotta unite, we gotta fight, and we gotta light, whichever light is ours. Mm -hmm. In the name of my good brother, Kevin Reese, we gotta run like Harriet. In the name of my good sister, Anika Bowie, I said, we out here, boots on the ground. We got to speak with power, authority, and clarity, like my good brother Eliza Dare say. That's right. And we must not complain, but we must activate. That's right. Like my good sister Leslie say. Yes. You see, these are all individuals who are about action. We all are out here right now because we are about action. We took the first step and we showed up. So I just want to thank you for showing up. That's the first step. But now, we must dream, plan, and execute. You feel me? An idea is nothing without the actual implementation. So we can be out here talking about wanting freedom. We can be out here making this noise. We can be out here protesting and marching these streets. But if you going home, and you're not getting educated on the land that you live in, and you're not out here voting, and you're not out here mobilizing your community in a way that you could, then what are you truly doing? So with that being said, I just wanna say to you all that you have the power to make a change. Be the change that you wanna see. Myself, my name is Louis Blaze. I'm born and raised from the Twin Cities of Minnesota. I call myself Louis Blaze because I walk through the fire with no fear. And I am a creative, a storyteller, and a visionary. And today I was asked to come out to you all and share a piece. And I will end with our own poem. I just wanted to speak from my heart. But I feel like this has to be said today. It was brought up plenty of times, and it matches with what we need to be doing. So, without further ado, I will share my piece I created called Why Vote. Why vote? I said we vote because of the blood oath that's been spilled. For our past leaders and ancestors who have all been killed. Listen. 
to fight for a right that we as humans deserve. That's the reason why I vote, but it's only the first. Why vote? You should vote if you care about your community. I mean, look at your everyday life and tell me what do you see? Is it a perfect place full of peace, love, and positivity? Or are there some problems that can be solved and room for more productivity? See, most people hear the word vote and think of a U.S. president, when in reality that position for us is irrelevant. Do you know about state representatives, mayors, governors, and city council members? Or what about attorney generals, judges, or maybe even local commissioners? See, there are many positions of power. We all have a power to impact. But the true reason why we are still enslaved is within us, and that's a fact. Why I vote? I vote because I'm black. I vote because at the end of the day, I'm the only one that's gonna have my back. I vote because when I was 16, the state wanted to send me to prison. I was young, hurt, and lost, but they couldn't be compassionate with my decision. My public defender told me, hey, you only looking at five years. I went to my JDC cell as a teen and much fear drowned in tears. I thought about my brothers and them growing up with no male role model. I thought about my mother and leaving her alone in all her sorrow. I thought about not graduating and disappointing my family. I thought about that day as if it was gonna happen that tomorrow. Why vote? I vote because of how many times I've been stopped by the police. I vote because of the trauma that is triggered when they behind me. All I see is a gun in my face and voices yelling, get down, get down. But when I move to get down, they want to load me with rams. Why vote? I vote because it is one of my only rights as an American, not to mention an African-American, an African without heritage, and an American with no inheritance. And therefore, I'm the only one that's capable of changing my narrative. Why vote? You should vote so people like Donald Trump won't become a dictator of this land. One day you want to laugh at him, and another day you got handcuffs around your hands, being drugged up out of your home during a World War III, and all of a sudden we in a bloodbath with a bunch of other countries. Why vote? You should vote because there are some politicians with good minds and good hearts. Shout out to John Thompson. And all they need is some support from us as a start. But being closed-minded and miseducated is truly dangerous. I ask my people to go vote, and then they all get to saying, Ah, oh, that don't matter. I don't do politics. I ain't even like the president. And all types of ridiculousness. See, it makes my heart heavy that my people feel so dismissed and disconnected from this society that we forget it does exist. The power of the vote, the right that you have. You see, true justice is within. We just have to reach in and grab. There are many reasons to vote. I shouldn't have to tell you why, but when you ask, this is it. This is the reason that I vote, why you should vote, why your sister should vote, your brother should vote, your father should vote, your mother should vote, your grandma should vote, your grandpa should vote, your auntie should vote, your uncle should vote, all of your little cousins and your big cousins should vote. And once again, we must vote. So, when they go low, we go vote. Repeat after me, say vote, vote, vote. Vote, vote, vote. If you said that, I hope you vote. All power to the people. Yes, sir.